It's Freedom Files with James Burns. Welcome to the Freedom Files podcast for this Thursday, September 8th, 2011. I am James Burns. We are joined now by Bob Chapman, his website, theinternationalforecaster.com. Bob, how are you doing today? Well, pretty good. Ah, well, we're doing pretty good up here as well, except for what's going on in Texas. I mean, that's the uh, entire state is burning down, but um, here in Louisiana, it's not too bad, 80-something degrees, so the fall is starting to kick in, fortunately. You know, small saving grace for us all here. But we'll go ahead and start in uh, Europe, and then we'll come back to Texas in just a few minutes. Uh, with the uh, growing bank fears going on in the Eurozone, um, is it about to get worse than what happened back in 2008 with the Lehman Brothers collapse? And how how bad is it going to get there in the EU, Bob? Well, you know, they tell us the uh, financial positions of the financial companies, banks, brokerage firms, etc., is better. And... Uh, it, it's better in the sense that uh, they have been making pretty good profits because they rigged the market. And um, on the other hand, uh, they still carry two sets of books approved by the U.S. government, the BIS, Bank for International Settlements, and the FS, FASB, which is an accounting organization. And... Um, so they're really not in good shape. Euro got bombed today. It was down like 180, which is almost two pennies. And uh, I don't know that would put us somewhere around 140. And that's not good because uh, the credit default swaps on the Greek bonds, and their insurance, like people betting that maybe the bonds that they own might go under so they buy a credit default swap. Uh, that means that there's a 91% chance of default and falling out of the euro. That's what's going on over there today. The people who are in power in Europe, the politicians, who are owned lock, lock, lock stock, and barrel by the bankers, they now have to submit an amount of money that in Germany that Germany would lend to Greece and others. And the public is beside themselves. They they have to try to get this thing through the Bundestag and the Bundesrat, which is the House and the Senate in Germany. And um, I don't know whether they can do that or not because about 25 people in the CDU, which is a ruling power party, which is run by Mrs. Merkel, who's a communist, and what she's doing in that party, I'll never know. Um, but, you know, things in Europe can be very interchangeable. Um, and she's going to try to get it passed. Well, that's on behalf of the bankers. They just had six elections since March, and the CDU has won lost every one of them, big time. The last one they lost was in Mecklenburg, Pomerania, which is in eastern Germany near the Baltic. And that's where the constituency of Mrs. Merkel is. So she got bombed. And they get bombed in Hamburg and four other places, too. And so if they do not come up with the money, the euro is doomed. In fact, the European Union is doomed. Uh, they'll all go back to their own currencies. It'll be painful, but it could very well happen. On the other hand, if they do go forward and pass this, which the people don't want them to do, they say, look, we don't want to put on any more debt. We're, we're willing to take the losses we've got. That's the end of it. And this is like 70 to 75 percent. And I'm afraid if the parliamentarians pass this thing, then there'll be demonstrations, riots, bloodshed, and I wouldn't give five cents for the lifespan of these people who vote for this bill 
in the Bundestag. I mean, I've, I'm not seen since the Second World War, and I lived in Germany for a long time. I speak German. And I have not seen this kind of disgruntlement. And that's a very, very calm, easy word. I mean, these people are raging mad. And so maybe they're putting that stuff together along with the guess that Greece is going to default or will have to default because they can't get the money. And uh, that's what's weighing on the markets over there. Of course, the market in the United States goes up, which is ridiculous, but it's manipulated, and that's why it did go up. Uh, gold was up, I don't know, 40 or $50 again today and went down to 1800 the other day. I said, hey, everybody buy again. It's a great. It's going to go right back up to 1928, and it will. And so um, that's what's going on in Europe in part. In the United States, we got the president, and uh, he says he's going to come up with $300 billion, and no one will have to pay for it. Hmm, this is yeah. not nice. Exactly. Now, now what they're going to do, and they're working on this thing under the debt extension bill, and they're going to eliminate $1.8 trillion in spending. At the same time, this guy wants $300 billion. Now, where's the money going to come from? You guessed it. Social Security and Medicare, which we paid for. It belongs to us, not to the government. They stole it. And all the money that's going to come in, if they have their way, will go over to bail out the economy. And it won't bail out the economy. It won't do any good whatsoever. I mean, $300 billion is nothing in today's scheme of things. So, very bad. And I saw Bernanke speak this morning. Uh, he had nothing new to say. And uh, I know exactly what they're going to do. And they're going to have a QE3, but they're not going to tell you how they're doing it. But it's already in my publications as to how they're going to do it. And so it's not good. It's going to get worse. And, uh, you know, it's been three months full, June, July, August, that there's been no stimulus going into the economy. Uh, the Fed has been spending $300 billion that they had maturing in bonds that they're rolling over into new bonds, treasuries. And um, But the money that had been flowing in the economy isn't. And the economy can't live without it. So that's why he's asking for $300 billion. If he doesn't get it, and the Republicans say they won't vote for it, and they do have a majority in the House. And if he doesn't get it, then I would think that we'll use GDP. GDP was 1% in the second quarter. In the third and fourth quarter, it'll probably be even. Next year, without stimulus of some kind, it'll be minus 5. That's definitely not good, Bob. No, but I'm not here to tell you fairy tales. I'm here to tell you the truth. <laughs> and that's that's why I enjoy listening to you, Bob, because you're not sugarcoating it. You're not putting on the rose-colored glasses. You're telling it exactly as it is. And I concur with you, Bob, regarding this um, three to $400 billion jobs plan of Obama's planning on uh, rolling out tonight in his big speech. Um, I, I just don't think it's going to solve anything. It's throwing more money at the problem, and – they're, they're not coming up with real solutions here. They never do. Because it'll impede their re-election. Yeah, it will. Because, I mean, in order to have real solutions, I mean, there, there has to be a lot of growing up in this country. In order to do that, you know, it's going to be painful, just like what Europe is about to go through in order to go back to their currencies. As you mentioned a moment ago, we're going to have to go through something very similar here. Well, I made a call two years before the Master Treaty. Uh, which I think was in, uh, let me think, uh, 99. 99, yeah, 99. I said it won't work. 3% of GDP, public debt, they can't live with that. They can't function without it. They have socialist economies. And um, the other thing is one interest rates uh, takes, fits for all. You've got to be kidding me. 
dumber than dumb. Yeah, that pretty much explains most of our elected officials, unfortunately. We're talking with Bob Chapman this afternoon, his website, theinternationalforecaster.com. And, Bob, since uh, most of our Congress critters and our president, unfortunately, have a, I guess at best, a high school um, education, I'm probably giving them too much credit there, um, what would be some real solutions regarding jobs and unemployment and the economy in general? Well, 70% of the jobs are created by small businesses and, and medium-sized businesses, but mostly small. And so what do you do? You give them tax credits. Uh, you give them credits for everybody they hire. Um, you make sure that the banks will lend them money if they need it and want it uh, at a reasonable rate, not 8% in this kind of a market, but more like 35 or 4%, which is pretty reasonable. And um, you have got to start peering back on socialistic uh, solutions, food stamps, extended unemployment. Start telling the people the truth about statistics. I just wrote a piece about it. It's in today's issue regarding statistics. It's awful. They're calling CPI 3.6% and it's 11.2. They're calling unemployment 9.1 and it's 22.6. Get out of here. They must think we're stupid. But nobody steps up to the plate in Wall Street or in the executive boardroom or any place else and says, look, these, these figures aren't right. Nobody. You know why? Because they're all afraid they're going to lose their job. Well, you know something? I don't have a job. You're my job. My job is to tell you the truth and hope that you can save your bacon by getting into gold and silver related assets gold and silver coins and bullion, and shares. And the reason for that is a safe place if you got money. If you don't have money, get dehydrated and freeze-dried foods. If you can't afford that, stock canned goods and rotate them, things you normally eat. And get a water filter. Hopefully everybody has something to defend their family. If you don't, get something, like an AR-15 or an AK-47. Definitely, Bob, and people should have been doing this for a while now, and I'm willing to bet that most of our listeners, Bob, have been doing this because they've been hearing about this for the past several years. Now they're well-educated, they're well-informed. They know they know what's coming our way. They know that we're getting a step closer to it hitting the fan. And it, it's, it, is, it is pretty sad, though, that not only do I think that these people, these corporatists, the uh, elected officials are afraid of losing their jobs, I think they're also afraid of eventually being brought up on charges and being thrown, you know, basically under the prison. Under the bus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they definitely got a lot to fear, and that's one of the big reasons why they, they most likely go along with padding the books when it comes to the, uh, the fake numbers as opposed to the real numbers. Unscrupulous sociopaths, some of which are psychopaths. I mean, look at their record for paying taxes, being in debt, philandering, whether it's with men, men, or men, women. It doesn't make any difference. It's a disgusting cesspool. And they think they can do anything they want. And they don't believe in the Constitution. I mean, what kind of representation is that? Throw them all out, except the guys that voted properly to stop spending money ridiculously and uh, get people who will get our troops out of all these places in the world and get them all the war out of the wars that they're in and bring them home. This is terrible. And can you imagine being a professional in the military and going into Afghanistan? Let's say you're a gunnery sergeant in the Marine Corps, and they say, see that field over there, sergeant? Yes, sir. You take your stick there, that, uh, that uh, platoon, and you go over and guard that field. And they look at it and say, sir, what's in that field? That's opium, son. Oh, really? Well, why are we guarding opium? Because the CIA has to sell it to finance their black operations. Oh, okay. It's disgusting. 
And not only are they having to guard uh, huge opium fields, Bob, but I've seen plenty of video on YouTube where the troops are also guarding uh, large portions of fields of marijuana, yet both of those are, are illegal here in the United States. I mean, the hypocrisy in action once again. It's dreadful. We have a government that started to go wild in the 1960s uh, when they tried to recruit me to join them the CIA and the NSA, who I used to work with when I was in military counterintelligence. I, I said, you've got to be kidding me. I said, you know, I know what the mafia is like. You guys are ten times worse. And they said, well, you know, you'll be an officer and you'll make a lot of money and, you know, you know you'll be serving your country. I said, oh, really? I said, I, I just bought a brand new blue suit and I'm getting out like in a month or so. I guess it was six weeks. And I says, you know, all those stripes or all those uh, insignias you're going to give me are not going to look good in that blue suit, so I decline. That's a true story. And they've never forgiven me. Because not only did I say no, <laughs> I was a nasty little thing about it. <laughs> anyway, you do what you do in life, and you have to be... Uh, prepared to defend yourself and i am all the time and that's a that's a good uh uh way to live in my opinion you gotta be that way bob and i, I don't understand this because th these people in the cia most of them are not bad people they they generally believe through the programming that they've gone through the brainwashing that they're actually serving their country and i just don't understand it how how is killing innocent people overthrowing legitimate governments and making things worse, serving our country. I just don't get that. Well, there's half of them I've always felt that overlook that stuff and just do their job because they think it's necessary. The other half are bad people. It's as simple as that. And I know some of them, personally. I mean, people who are terrible crooks, who are, you know, line officers, colonels, majors, and... Uh, an equivalent, and, you know, it's just a, a mindset. Maybe they get passed over by the mafia. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's just sad because it's it's not only in the CIA where you see this, this corruption and this um, inability to actually uh, do right. They're actually doing more harm than good. You, you move over to uh, several uh, vast agencies within our own country, uh, such as, well, well, let's go ahead and go to FEMA, because now they're calling the shots in Texas, turning away volunteers as wildfires continue to burn and consume over 1,300 homes now and over 100,000 acres. And, Bob, I mean, how much worse off is Texas going to be now that Governor Perry has brought in FEMA to run things? Well, they'll probably have a special enclave for bisexuals, too, because that's what he is. <laughs> and I love telling people that, because I don't think a man like that should be in the White House. And that's my own personal opinion. You know, all you people who disagree with me, that's okay. That's my feeling. I mean, this guy, I've been told by people close to the situation, he's been in one orgy after another. It doesn't matter whether it's a guy or a gal. And this guy's a sick puppy. I mean, can you imagine have him have his thumb on the button that sends nuclear nuclear weapons uh, out to China or Russia because he feels like it? Yeah, I am, I am very concerned about Rick Perry. And, and that's my problem with a lot of these people. I mean, I don't have a, a problem with people's sexual choices, but when you walk around posing to be something completely different, as in a quote-unquote uh, happily married Christian conservative uh, heterosexual, yet uh, the information comes out you're, that paints a completely different picture, Bob, that, that's when I, I have a problem with somebody, when, when they're coming out as a complete hypocrite. That's my stance as well. I'm just a little bit more outspoken about it, because I don't care what anybody thinks. And when you reach 76 years old, you get that way. But I've never <laughs> felt how anybody thought. I think what I think, and if someone tells me I'm wrong and they're right, I'll say, gee, thank you for informing me I was wrong. But uh, you got to be your own man, and that I am. And I agree entirely with that, Bob. And I don't know if you had a chance to uh, catch some of the debate last night, but there were some interesting photos uh, taken in between the commercial breaks. 
Uh, I guess uh, Ron Paul and uh, Perry really got into it, and I wrote down a description of what happened. Well, uh, that's terrific because I I didn't see them. Yeah. I, I did some. I did eight shows yesterday, and I was ragged. I only had six today, so I was lucky. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it was it was more of the same, Bob. I mean, the typical debates. But uh, anyways, uh, the what happened was is um, there was a photo, several photos of him and Ron Paul during the breaks, and uh, one of them. Uh, Perry actually goes up to Ron Paul's podium, and he puts uh, one hand, cuffs it on Ron Paul's arm, and with the other hand, he's basically wagging his finger at Ron Paul. And, and I'm just wondering, what, what the hell is wrong with this guy? I mean, he's obviously in, an, in a, a packed auditorium at the Reagan uh, Library where there's hundreds of people watching this, even though they're not, you know, on, even though it's not being televised. I mean, he's doing this in front of a whole bunch of people, and it doesn't look good. Well, the question is, did he make a pass at him? <laughs> I think if he would have done that, I think Ron Paul would have backhanded him. <laughs> well, you know, the capability is there. I just thought I'd bring it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I wouldn't put it past Rick Perry, unfortunately. But, I mean, it, it's just sad, though, because, I mean, with what happened last night, I knew this was coming, that the mainstream media, MSNBC, they were going to do this. They were going to make it the Rick and uh, Mitt show. And the, the question is, I mean, how badly does the mainstream media, the GOP establishment, and the powers that be want the GOP nomination to be either Perry or Romney? And what can we expect if either of these guys become our next president? Uh, whatever the Council on Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, <laughs> the Bilderberger Group, and the black nobility that runs the Illuminati in Europe wants them to do. That's what they will do. They're bought and paid for even if they lose, they're fixed forever. They go on the board of this uh, company and that company and or be appointed this, that, and the other thing. And, uh, you know, they'll, they'll make a billion here and a billion there. They, they, they just don't care about anybody but themselves. In fact, what I've seen, they don't even care about the people in their own families. No, because as you've mentioned time and time again, most of these people are either sociopaths or they're outright psychopaths. That's for sure. And uh, during the debate, Ron Paul obviously didn't get much airtime as usual, but he did bring up something very interesting whenever they were talking about immigration. And it's something that I, I, I have to admit that even I, I didn't really think much about, but it actually makes sense regarding the border fence. Uh, this is what he said, uh, quote, unquote, the people that want big fences and guns, sure, we can secure the border. And he, went, so he goes on, a barbed wire fence with machine guns, that would do the trick. But I don't believe this is what America is all about. He continues, uh, every time you think about the toughness of the border and the ID cards and real IDs, he thinks that the penalty against American people as well. And he thinks that the fence business is designed uh, may well be used against us and keep us in. In economic turmoil, the people want to leave uh, where they're, you know, they want to leave the country. Uh, but at the same time, if you think about it, the uh, fence being used to keep all those bad people out might actually be used eventually to keep us in. What are your thoughts on that? I agree. Absolutely. He understands their mindset, just like I do. And we all, you know, we came up in different fields at the same time. We're the same age. And um, he's absolutely correct. In fact, that could be a very, very strong issue. I, I get a lot of letters every day pertaining to leaving the country. And uh, most people can't because they're not in a position to do so. And uh, there's going to be more and more of them. And if you're going to think you're going to go do that, you better do it now. Because, you know, the shade might get pulled down. Will it be two years or three years or five years? I don't know. But they're going to do it. And they're going to have currency controls. And they're going to control what money you have. And unfortunately, it's hard to place money outside the country nowadays because the government wants you to fill out this form, whatever the number is, and tell them, you know, if you have an account here, there, and everywhere. And so a lot of Americans are leaving the country, becoming citizens of other countries, and giving up their citizenship. It used to be about 500 a year. 
Now it's grown to 10000 In fact, they even raised the fees from $50 to almost 500 Mercenary. You know, the question is, when are they going to stop Social Security? I mean, there's all these things that are, that are pending, and it's just not good. And uh, I, it's not going to be leading to anything that you want to experience, I'll tell you that. Well, I agree entirely, Bob, and, and that's the sad reality. I mean, they're already making it difficult for people to leave the country financially. I mean, I think there not there really stiff uh, tax penalties if you try and leave the country and become a citizen somewhere else? No, but what there is is as long as you're an American citizen, whatever you got belongs to the United States. That's their attitude. We allowed you to make it, and now we can take it away from you. And if you buy a house outside the country, it has to be reported by the country in which you live in. They want to know where that house is and who owns it. And how did you get the money to buy that house? It's awful. And then the beginning of uh, 2013, uh, the government uh, will charge taxes against any bank account you have in a foreign country if, in fact, you own them, owe them. And um, if you don't pay it, uh, the... Inland Revenue in Canada, maybe we'll pay it from your account, whether you like it or not. I mean, the, the, everything is closing in. They want total control over people. And so, you know, I know a lot of people don't want to leave their families and homeland, but um, do you want to live under that? I don't know. I made the decision a long time ago. This time I've been outside the country nine years. And quite frankly, I have no desire to return unless there's a revolution. And I wouldn't miss it for my life. Yeah, I mean, I, I hope the day comes where we eventually turn things around, Bob, but it, it seems to be more and more difficult to do so. And going back to the debate, another thing that um, – that you just mentioned a moment ago regarding Social Security, something else that uh, most of the other candidates brought up that I found uh, very, very disturbing, and it, it just shows you their mindset, where they are now. Uh, most of them were talking about Social Security. They talked about FEMA, and they talked about Homeland Security, not abolishing any of them, Bob, but, quote-unquote, fixing them. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they, they have no concept of the idea that, that a lot of this stuff is unconstitutional and should be completely done away with. They want to steal the money. Now, there's nothing in there because it's already been stolen, but money will be coming in there on a steady stream. And so they want to steal it. Yeah, they're, they're a bunch of thieves. That's what they are. And there was one interesting thing that happened last night, and this is just typical of them lately, uh, stealing uh, uh, you know plays out of Ron Paul's book. Uh, you had several of them, uh, when asked about uh, Bernanke, um, all of them were – we're talking about how they were planning on firing the guy if they became president. So that that's a positive thing, but it's all about the devil you know. Who are they going to replace Bernanke with? Somebody from Goldman Sachs mm -hmm. or J.P. Morgan Chase, who in reality really run the government and yeah, have that's for 100 it. years. And that's the unfortunate situation because, you know, the banksters took control, you know, back in 1913 with the Federal Reserve. And until, you know, these people are, are ready to accept the fact that the Federal Reserve is unconstitutional and has stolen control away from our currency, um, it's, you know, changing, uh, you know, one devil for another devil to run the Federal Reserve isn't going to stop anything. Nope. you got to do away with the Federal Reserve. you got to stop the revolving door between Wall Street and the Treasury Department and other departments in the U.S. government. It's a shame to have to ban people, but you have to do it because they're subversives. They're criminals. It's a criminal syndicate. It was like Yeltsin when he ran Russia after the fall of the Soviet Union. They stole billions. Billions. And of course they sold off um, companies and hold industries to Russians who were financed by the Rothschilds. When Putin came to power, he said none of that, and he took it all back. 
Some of them are in jail, and the ones that uh, aren't in jail are in Israel, and that's a fact. Uh, actually, there's two of them in London, but anyway, and big ones. In fact, they own one of them owns Chelsea, the football team, or you call it soccer. But anyway, uh, that's the kind of people these people are. And you're absolutely right. I think that there needs to be a serious uh, ban on, on this revolving door because you have this happening in, in every aspect of these uh, corporations, whether it's the banksters or big oil or pharma or the military-industrial complex, the food industry. You have their people come into our government, and then they, they write the laws, and they you know do everything and put it towards their advantage, while at the same time we the people suffer. They don't care one iota about the people. They're useless eaters, and they want to get rid of anywhere between 60 and 90 percent, depending upon who you talk to, within the Illuminous Enclave, so to speak. And that's true. That's absolutely true. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website, theinternationalforecaster.com. Uh, moving on now. Uh, coming up on Sunday, as you and I both know, Bob, we have the uh, 10th anniversary of 9-11. And i got a couple of questions for you on this one. I'll ask them all at the same time. Uh, one, what, what, is, what really happened on 9-11? Two, uh, why did it happen? Three, who was responsible? And four, in what ways is the U.S. and the world worse off as a result of what happened on 9-11? Well, first of all, I'm guessing. I have no hard evidence other than what others have put together. Uh, I saw the buildings come down on television, and I looked at my wife, Judy, and I said, hey, you know, I, I know how to use munitions. And I said, that building was blown up. I mean, they didn't have a fire and it fall, fell down. Uh, you know, that stuff had to be in there. It would take them two or three weeks to wire that place, which they did. So there was a cabal that did it. And it was a group of people within the United States government, behind the government. It included the CIA, the FBI, the Mossad was involved, as usual. And uh, they deliberately took those buildings down. They didn't care how many people got killed. And they needed an incident. And I had said the November before that there would be a false flag operation which would allow the United States somehow to go in and attack Iraq. And that's exactly what happened. And I said that right after that would be Afghanistan. And I was right. Who's next? Maybe Syria. Maybe Iran. I don't know about Israel. They had a half a million people demonstrating over the weekend uh, in the different cities in Israel. And uh, the captives aren't happy. And uh, I think you're going to see a lot of uh, people leaving Israel. I mean, honestly, I, I wouldn't really blame them, Bob, because, I mean, they, I mean, that, I mean, talk about a revolving door. I mean, it usually goes between the same people, I mean, over and over again running that government, and it's just so obvious. I mean, how many times has uh, Benjamin Netanyahu been prime minister? Look, they're a bunch of Nazis. It's as simple as that. They want to control the entire Middle East. It has nothing to do with the people who live there. It's the people who run the place. And it's, it's not right, it's wrong. Absolutely, and and it's you know one of several things happening throughout the entire world. Uh, over and over again, you have this corruption and authoritarian governments, not only in Israel but in the U.S. and Russia and China, all over the place. And eventually, it, it really has got to give, Bob. I mean, eventually, the people are going to have to stand up against this, or else um, we're all going to be in serious trouble. Well, everybody's afraid to stand up. Everybody's afraid to say anything except a small handful of people. And they can't get any support, generally speaking, from the public. There are people who support what I have to say and, and other things. But uh, the bottom line is that the public, they're afraid. And, you know, in a sense, you can't blame them. But once they get hungry, uh, they'll react. Will it be too late? Maybe. They might have them all in camps by then. Don't forget, we don't have any jobs left. 
you know, unemployment is 22.6%. I could easily see it down here five years from now in a deflationary depression at over 50%. And for you, those of you who would like to know, it was 38.6% during the Great Depression. So that's where this is headed. And, and that's my fear too, Bob. By the time people finally have enough and enough of the people get off their couches and hit the streets, I fear that the damage will already be done. Bob Chapman is our guest. His website, theinternationalforecaster.com. I uh, got a couple of email questions for you, Bob. Uh, first off, we'll go to uh, John. Uh, he wants to know your thoughts and opinions on rumors regarding China's intentions to uh, head towards uh, gold and possibly silver-backed uh, uh, renminbi currency, as well as the possible repercussions for the IMF and the BIS. Well, I think it would be more likely um, – that they would not use the renminbi, which is a domestic currency. They have the yuan, which is a foreign country currency, and they would be better off backing the yuan with gold or silver, whichever they choose, <laughs> because it's used in international finance. So maybe that's what he meant. Maybe that's what it really is, and that is backing the yuan instead of the renminbi. Um, the Chinese are big buyers of gold and silver. They don't like their own currencies. They don't mind anybody else's. And they've been through all this stuff before. Uh, Russia is the same thing. And uh, you have other big buyers. India has been a perennial buyer. And... Um, they will continue to be. And uh, in fact, they're using a lot of silver now because of the price of gold in their gifts. And uh, these gifts are given to wives by their husbands so they'll have something if the husband unexpectedly dies. It's sort of a uh, retirement plan, if you may. And so every holiday or birthday or whatever, uh, they give their wives uh, some gold or silver. And uh, it's, they probably control one-third of the gold in the world, which is a lot. So this is going to continue uh, in some countries. And if the dollar continues to do what it's doing, not acting very well, and gets cheaper down along the line, uh, then people are going to be galloping into uh, gold and silver. Uh, I think any kind of currency that's going to be used instead of the U.S. dollar, or even the U.S. dollar, will have to be gold-backed. There's so many con countries will, which will not accept a new international reserve currency unless it's gold-backed, period. And I think the Illuminists know that. And it's, and it's, only, it's not a question of if the dollar is going to be going the way of the dodo, it's, it's when. I mean, already the dollar has lost – we've lost the uh, AAA rating. There's growing talk about uh, the U.S. being ditched as the world reserve currency. So it's only a matter of time, Bob, before they, they go that route. Well, they certainly uh, probably will be forced to. And uh, – I think the dollar would be certainly an awful lot weaker if it were not for the weakness of the euro and the problems that Euro, the eurozone has and the EU as well. And uh, it's kind of a saving grace for the dollar. Uh, you know, these countries, the six of them, they broke. They just plain broke. And why should the solvent countries pay for them? There's nothing in the rules that say that we can come in and bail you out. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're all in serious trouble together. It's not just the U.S., it's Europe, it's the rest of the world as well. And my, my fear, Bob, is since we owe China a lot of money, eventually it's going to get to the point where China is going to come to collect and it's going to get really, really nasty. Well, it could lead to war. But, you know, if these people start a war, 
I'm talking about the people behind the scenes who really control things in America and in England and in Europe. If they have a war, uh, it'll be a nuclear war. And half the people in the world will get wiped out. And I wouldn't give two cents for the lifespan of anybody living in a major city in the United States, Russia, or China. It would destroy the world as we've known it, maybe for hundreds of thousands of years. I mean, it's just it's horrific to think about the possibility that they may actually be willing to go that far, Bob. And it's it's funny you talk about that because over the past couple of days, I, I you know I like to listen to other radio shows as well, and there's been a growing number of people talking about the very real possibility of not only a nuclear war but us having to somehow survive through a nuclear holocaust. Well, you don't always want to be living in the United States, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Or Russia or China. And China doesn't care if they lose half their population. they got too many now. Is That's the way they look at it. India is the same way. And you know the ideas of these people behind the scenes, how they want to get rid of the useless eaters. And that doesn't just include old people. It's many other people as well. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what Obamacare is all about with the death panels. Uh, In Texas, uh, with the uh, fires burning, uh, there was an incident where they were um, neglecting, I think, a nursing home around Austin. And they they waited till the last minute to go in and finally rescue the old people. But apparently they cared more about the uh, pets than they did about them. Well, you know, that's the way the world is today. And it's degenerating very quickly. And it's it's only going to continue to get worse. And going back on the the talk about the potential uh, war that's coming, I mean, we've talked about this several times. And I I think it's all going to tie in together. The the debt, these uh, wars that have been going on going for the past 10 years or so, uh, the possibility of going into Iran or Syria, it it is getting us one step closer towards an all-out World War III scenario. Well, most people don't understand what these people behind the scenes are up to. And they'll do anything to have complete power. And they've had it from time to time through the centuries. But uh, this time, they're very serious about cementing that power. And in that process part of the game is getting rid of people. You know, people say, well, gee, uh, we had the Second World War. Tens of millions of people got killed. Well, the people who planned and executed the war on both sides, they thought that was terrific. Too many people. Yeah, and you know, they continue to do that. I mean, uh, you have all these elite billionaires who come out acting like they're they're uh, humanitarians and they care for the people, uh, yet at the same time, you don't see them going into Africa or Somalia or any of these other continents or countries where people are starving to death and helping them out. In fact, the situation in these countries continue to get worse and worse, and the U.S. is unfortunately heading in that direction. So obviously, through their deeds and actions, Bob, you, you see exactly what they're all about. That's right. I lived in Africa for a number of years, and I've been over most of Africa. And the civilizations over there, I figure about a thousand years behind the civilizations of Europe and Asia and the United States. That's how big the gap is. I mean, you got to live there to understand. I had 300 people working in one of my companies, and they knew them all very well. And, you know, out of the whole 300, there might have been five of them that could really excel in life. The rest of them never happened. (laughs) So their attitude is, well, people are starving in Africa. Well, that's okay. They have too many children, so let's get rid of them. That's their attitude. Yeah, I mean... I mean, and you see exactly what's happening in Libya right now. I mean, the same situation. I mean, with the uh, you know the black Libyans that were supporters of Gaddafi, they're being rounded up by these Al Qaeda NATO terrorists, and they're being killed. That's right. 
And, Absolutely correct. And my question is, where's Kanye West asking about, you know, why doesn't Obama care about black people? <laughs> well, because he's not one. Yeah. <laughs> or at least he thinks he's not one. Yeah, but it's just a hypocrisy. I mean, if Obama was a white guy, you know, you, you'd, you'd have Al Sharpton, you'd have Jesse Jackson, you'd have the NAACP, you know, protesting him because of what's happening in Lib- Libya with all these innocent black Africans being killed. But right now, not even a peep, nothing. They don't care. They want to live large. Mm-hmm. And all that stuff doesn't mean anything because they've been there and done that. Doesn't mean anything. That's why I do so much to help people. Because I realized I was given a great gift, a wonderful mind. And now I'm sharing it with everybody in the latter days of my life. And hopefully I'll live to be 125 and keep on doing it. Well, I hope so too, Bob. <laughs> We're talking with Bob Chapman, his website, the internationalforecaster.com. Uh, another email question. This one comes from David. He wants to know uh, where does the government get its funds for uh, the retirement plans and are the funds being misused, for example, to buy, say, shares in Fortune 500 companies and or banks? Well, I think uh, the money that you see invested in corporations uh, is run through the investment divisions of entities that take in money if, in fact, that's what they do. And uh, I think that uh, the pension to uh, put money into corporations is more the, to, to push their stock up so that their, their buddies who are offices can sell out their options. But uh, the money that comes into uh, Social Security and, uh, and Medicare, it comes in the general fund. And they credit those two organizations with no intention of ever paying them back. And they take the money and use it on what they feel is necessary. So there's never been any money. It's always been taken and used elsewhere. I call it stolen because it really is. It is. And the sad reality is the government never uses our tax dollars, our money, towards what they say they're going to use it to. I mean, for example, our roads are falling apart, the infrastructure's in shambles, and yet tonight, uh, like we mentioned a few minutes ago, Bob, you know, you have Obama coming out with his three to $400 billion jobs plan, and I'm willing to bet that 90% of that money is not going to go towards any jobs, and if they are jobs, they're going to be more government jobs. Well, at this stage of uh, problems, that's usually the case. What they've done is sufficiently terrorized uh, small business and some medium-sized business, and they don't want to expand. And most of the money that's being spent in development by major corporations is being spent to reduce um, the amount of people in the workforce, workforce. In other words, labor-saving devices of one form or another. And it's going to continue on, you know, one of these days. No one will have a job. Or people will be trekking down to Guadalajara or Shanghai or Bangladesh or Mumbai to get work at $2 an hour. That's what they want to do. In the elite at the top, they just keep on getting richer, more powerful. Screw the people, I say. Yeah, and it's going to continue to get worse and worse. And uh, this article just came up on uh, Drudge Report in uh, out of Washington State. Uh, longshore man uh, stormed Washington State port and damaged the railroad. Hundreds of longshoremen stormed the port of Longview, uh, Washington, earlier today. Overpowered and held security guards, damaged railroad cars, and dumped grain. That is the center of the labor dispute. And uh, six guards were apparently held hostage for a couple hours after 500 or more longshoremen broke down the gates around 4.30 a.m. and smashed windows in the guard shack. I mean, this is getting crazy. I mean, crime rates are going up, and now you have people, workers, uh, uh, getting out of control. I mean, that's just how bad things are getting in the U.S. 
and they're going to get worse. You haven't even touched the surface yet. I mean, anybody that doesn't have a weapon in their home and, know, and, know, and knows how to use it is foolish. There's a lot of bad people out there. And, you know, if you're going to get a gun, make sure it's a gun that's going to kill somebody. Otherwise, don't use it. I mean, I've had experiences with small calibers, and I had to shoot them too many times. So I decided that I wanted guns that you shoot them once and they go down. <laughs> and they do the trick. <laughs> so think about that. And, and definitely something else that people need to consider because there, there's possibly people considering getting a firearm or a rifle or a shotgun that have never used a gun in their life. And in my opinion, from my own experience, because I was taught by my grandfather how to use firearms, is that if you don't know how to properly use a firearm, you need to first learn how to because chances are uh, that weapon could be more harm to you than anyone else that you intend to use it on. Cost you your life if you don't know how to use it. You go to a professional and let a professional teach you. It's worth the money that you're going to spend on it. In pistols, you want 45, 357, 40 caliber, nothing below that. I know I've been there and done that. And AK 47s and AR 15s, riot guns, those are the best things. You want to be able to reach out and touch them. I agree entirely, and especially with uh, the 45 pistols. That's what I use. I mean, yeah, I mean, the 9mm holds more bullets, but uh, a 45 has way more stopping power. I saw someone who was shot 10 times with a 9mm and kept on coming. Yeah. And that's, that convinced me. And, and I've got 9mm. But, yeah, it's a 45 and a 357 Auto are my favorites. And uh, the AR-15. And... Uh, and there are some other good weapons like uh, the M1 Garand and the M14 and, uh, you know, for longer shooting, you know, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 yards. But you don't often get shots like that unless you're in a, uh, a battle theater, we'll put it, call it. Well, it's also good to have a gun like that, say like a, a 270 for like hunting. Because you never know when you may have to fend for yourself, uh, Bob. We got about a minute left. Uh, how can people get the international forecaster? Well, the forecast is about business, finance, economic, social, and political issues all over the world. We publish by email on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Runs around 400 pages each time. Yeah, 440 pages each time. <laughs> I am prolific, but not that prolific. We have a hard copy that goes out uh, twice a month for those who are not on the internet. And everything you, you need to know is there in that publication every week. You can get a free, in, free introductory copy by going to theinternationalforecaster.com, theinternationalforecaster.com, or to www.intforecaster.com, intforecaster.com. You can also get a copy, or if you have a question, we'll answer it, or... If you'd like to get a copy of our recent recommendations in gold and silver shares, email us. And that address is Bob, B-O-B, at I-N-T-F-O-R-E-C-A-S-T-E-R dot com. Bob at Intforecaster dot com. If you'd like to call toll-free, that number is 877-479-8178. That's 877-479-8178. Get see the copy there, and they are also offering a free one-year subscription, and if you're going to subscribe, that's the way to do it. The deal is fantastic. Take advantage of it. It absolutely is. Bob, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. I will talk to you next week, sir. Okay, bye-bye, and thank all of you for listening.